Oh, what's up, everybody? Once again, it's Brand Man Sean, and I'm here with a very special guest. You guys probably don't need to be introduced to this dude, but I'm going to reintroduce him anyway. He is Curtis King, um, hip hop producer, also has had a rap career, also is one of the best uh, forward thinking, innovative self help. Uh, producers, music minds on YouTube, also Thank on you. IG. He's there too. Uh, he's just <laughs> guys doing a lot, and you can see his grind before your eyes. And I don't even put him in a pocket of anybody else because what he's doing is is unique to himself and the Thank personality you. he brings to the game. So, without further ado, once again, it's Curtis Kane. What's up, man? What's going on with you, man? How you doing, bro? Appreciate you having me on. For sure, man. And, sure. and that introduction, too, man. I think that people, um, I understand that people love to make comparisons to other people so that they're comfortable with what they're seeing. But I, I tell you, one of the biggest compliments you can never give me, at least, is um, that I'm, I'm blazing my own trail because that's definitely what I'm here to do. I, I, you know, if anything, never want to imitate my, um, the people that I look up to or that I look for information. I like to emulate if anything, it's a big difference, big difference. So I appreciate those words. I think, man, I, no problem. Because by the way, that was just right off the top. Cause I'm, I'm a straight up admirer, man. So I've, <laughs> I've, I've, I've seen it and I was able to just take what I've seen and what I've observed over time. But I think you hit on a very valuable subject right off the mm -hmm. bat when you talked about emulating and having those people you admire, but still blazing your own path. Right. What do you feel like when it comes to artists, producers, What's the difference? And how do you, what does that look like coming into your own? In terms of the, the, the topic of emulation or, or imitation or whatnot? Right, so our, let's be realistic, right? We all start right. off imitating people, even sure. when we aren't. Like we can be saying sure. we're, we're still imitating them, but what does it look like? And what does it even feel like when you know that you're creating your own groove, that you hit that, that um, stride? Well, I, you're absolutely right that, that imitation is absolutely a part of the process because, you know, how do you know, how do you know what it feels like to ride a bike without the training wheels until you ride it with the training wheels, until you know, like, what the motion of it feels like, until you know what the balance feels like, you won't understand it until you ride with the training wheels. And eventually, one day you take the training wheels off because they become uh, a hindrance to your growth and a hindrance to the speed that you want to go. So I say from the beginning, you know, I, I wasn't really, I thought that I was blazing trails in the beginning. I was like, I, I want, I don't want to copy anybody. Cause I had influences all over the place. Like I was influenced by Buster Rhymes, by Outkast, by Tupac and just those three alone. Um, you're, you're going to get a, a you know, a, a gumbo pot of, of, of inspiration. And so I loved Erica Badu, Jill Scott, Chade, And it was like, how do I bring all those worlds together? In the beginning, it was very chaotic. And I spent most of my time and energy in the beginning trying to do something different. And then when I saw that people weren't receptive to it, I started to imitate the ones that I thought they were receptive to. So I started to yeah. you know, kind of mimic the, um, the, the little Wayne's at the time or mimic the, um, you know, the Jay Z's and the lyricists at the time. And it was like, I went through that whole journey just to figure out that, you know, both of them are necessary. Yeah. And so I think for artists or producer in the beginning, it's, it is the most valuable thing for you to copy everything, copy everything until you're sick of it. Gotcha. Right. That's that, that's the important part when you're sick of it, that's when you start to hear your sound come through, right? That's when you start to hear those, 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 those subtle nuances of what your sound is. People are like, well, how can I find my sound? Well, you can't find your sound because you're still in a place where you need to, to, to ride with the training wheels. So for me, that, that process was a good six or seven years. And then when, you, when, when I had a very casual conversation with a friend of mine that said, you know what I like about your music? It's very nostalgic. And for somebody like myself, that's, you know, always a marketing mind and thinking about how I can like brand myself and whatnot, um, a light bulb went off and I said, nostalgic. Okay. Well, I was like, well, my music is nostalgic, but my fashion is, and my fashion looks very modern. I was like, how can I like mix all this stuff together? So then I, I then brought the flat top, then brought the, the thrift shop nineties clothes. And it wasn't like I was trying to be 
anybody else except for this vision of who I saw myself to be. But the moment that it clicked and the moment that it was like, I can't put him in a box. He just, he sounds like a little bit of everything. I knew I was doing something right. And that's when I started to find success and get on the radars of a lot of people um, that, that ended up influencing my career in a very positive way. Mm. And building a fan base. That, that's, that's where it happened. The fan base came when they said, when they couldn't peg me with one person. It was just like, I had a guy come up to me and he was like, he was like 10 years older than me. And he was like, man, you know what I love about you? You remind me of, my, of those house party days, man. Like, you know, I, you probably were too young, but you remind me of those house party days. And I was like, whatever experience I am for him is another experience for somebody else and somebody else. And that's why they identify with me. And I built the fan base as an artist and a producer in that space. So, um, yeah, copy everything until you hate it. I mean, that's, the, that's probably the most important advice in that, that regard. That's dope because it makes me think of two things, man, that you said. Mm -hmm. Like one, I always, like growing up, and I know a lot of people have always felt that way. Like when you look at visual artists, right? It's a very right. clean example. And people will say, yo, man, I could do that. Just splash some painting on the wall. Right. right? But when you look at somebody like, let's say, Leonardo da Vinci, these people still went through the process of all the techniques. And then mm -hmm. once they get more abstract, they, you know, for whatever reason, that just seems to how the process goes, right? Then you can right. just push off and do anything and then people gravitate towards it. But when you just try to go a little bit too wild at first without understanding the science, and that's what really building the craft is, you, you, you build a science, whether it's your own right. style, which is your own science, or the other sciences of the game, which is other people's styles and, and cadences. I mean, it allows you to apply whatever you learn in a different way, right? Um, sure. Sure. So that's, that's one thing I think about. And then just the fact that you talked about how you people are coming toward to you for your unique style. That's right. one of those, like valuable things for an artist in my mind, because mm -hmm. if you don't bring your unique style and perspective, people can go somewhere else to get it. You're a commodity at that point. We, and you got to think about the things that 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 like that green shirt that you have on or, or, or the blue couch in the background. These are things that made an impression upon you. Right. This Dilla cover back here. Um, you know, this particular size of this whiteboard. These things have an impression on you because of how different they are from everything else. But how much they have similarities to things we're familiar with, because that's the thing about it. Like it's almost like food when you're sitting down to eat food. You know, if you got if you got a a bunch of plates and the left side smells a little different you're likely to lean to the right side right yeah. but if somebody says nah man this is bomb right here like, like try this one this one has a little bit of that side with this side yeah you will try that one and you remember it from like Ooh, what is that i've never had that before uh and i think that that's the balance that an artist and a, and a producer has to um has to be able to bring so don't shy away from the things that you are, Word. you know, because although people may say things about certain rappers, like, oh, your voice, you sound, you sound too much like this person. You can't worry about that because you can't change your voice. All you can do is, is, is flip what they consider a negativity and, and utilize it into a positive manner. So, you know, I would say that if you really want to think outside the box and you're a rapper and you're like, no, but I take my ser my career serious you literally could build a career and be that person if you want it. If you have a voice that's like a, you know, like a little yachty, you could literally build a career bigger than what you would have ever built a career trying to do it yourself off of making little, little, uh, 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 little yachty parody songs yeah. because of how similar your voice is. To me, that's, that's thinking outside the box and utilizing in a way that was like, Yo, I, I can't like, imagine you're that guy where little yachty releases a song and people are like, ah, whatever. And they look at you and they're like, but I can't wait to see this parody of that. Like yep. somebody has to be the weird owls. But the thing about it is we're so insecure about stepping outside the box and into our own destiny. Somebody has to fulfill that role, right? There's, a, there's like a million and one Michael Jackson impersonators in Vegas right now. Somebody had to fulfill that role. And, and I think that the closer that you are to walking in your destiny, that's when you're going to see things ultimately uh, work out for you. I'll give you one example that I wanted to share with you. I forget the, the, uh, the gentleman's name, but he's, he was a dad who was, um, you know, kind of struggling financially during Christmas time. And um, all he could really afford was to buy his son these, uh, 
these like these toys, these toys that have like their own culture, kind of like how Pokemon has their own backstories. These toys have their own backstories. And mind you, this dude, the dad had a rap career already, wasn't really going the way he envisioned it to go. And um, he did. He just decided, you know what, I want to make rap songs for my son and talk about these toys. Well, that guy did that, had a YouTube channel, ended up becoming that the toy dad uh, on YouTube, blew up so big that the company invited him and another music act. And mind you, it's like, you know, clear over thousands and thousands of people at this at this um these events yeah. that bring these like kind of like a comic con and he's up here performing he's up here rapping in a place where no other rapper would have any reason to be there because of what he chose to rap about and how he stepped outside the box i always use that example as as um you got to walk in your own destiny and a lot of people are afraid to walk in their own destiny because in their mind they're like there's only one way to make it i have to be on bet i have to be on mtv really and it's right. like that's not fair. Everybody can't fit through that door, right? Um, and, and it's not meant for everybody to go through that door either. You know, there's there's a calling for you that you would have never expected just because you were willing to do the things 95% of the people around you weren't willing to do. Word, man. That's, that seems I've never heard that story before, man. But that's that's super dope because one of the biggest things that I find when I talk to so many artists uh, and just mm -hmm. a lot of entrepreneurs too, but just so many artists these days where you see that there's all this extra opportunity out there. But people are still stuck in that mind frame of, I have to win this, this way. Right. I have maybe that dream. Right. And I saw a speed, some be, I saw a star and I wanted to be this kind of star. I want people to love me for me and think I'm so unique and think I'm the greatest artist, not just in the t terms of musically, but like in, in a Kanye like fashion, right? Where I'm this right. here versus being comfortable with something like being a, a little yachty impersonator, but still winning and doing what you want to do in life. And you have this unique path. Cause I can right. see that, right? I want to see what this dude, how this dude's going to twist this song up in the same way. Some news might come out in the music industry. I might say, Oh dang, I want to, let me, let me wait. I know Curtis is going to do a video on this. I can't wait. Yeah. Something. Right. Somebody has to do it. And I think there's a lot of people who, Here's the thing about it, you know, like, like, and I've learned this from my, my YouTube channel, and, I, and, I, and I'm sure that you've learned this too. We can share as much marketing information as we want to our audience, yep. but, but we can't give them their vision, right? And, at the, and, and even worse than that, we can't make them unlock their vision either. Yep. And so I had this epiphany because I, I was always about planting seeds, and I, and I feel like you're the same way in that you, you, you share something hoping that it inspires something else, and that does happen. Yep. But at the same time, like, no, no, nobody could, there, there could have been no YouTube video, there could have been no conversation that could have made me see my vision clearer than my vision being in front of my face and me yep. not being afraid to do it, yep. right? Sometimes it's not, sometimes it's not a lack of inspiration that, that's, that's hindering us. Sometimes it's our fear being louder than uh, our truth. And, and and right there, right then and right there, you see it. Oh, you see it right there in your face. You know this is something that you should at least try to do. But you're so afraid of what other people around you are saying. You're so afraid of how it may not be hip hop. You're so afraid of it may not be industry that you're literally walking further and further away from your destiny. And you're pushing through what you think is your destiny and you're wasting valuable time. Or and I shouldn't say you're wasting time. You're 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 your lesson's gonna take a bit longer. That's real. That's real. You go off path and then eventually you came back to what you knew you were supposed to be doing. <laughs> facts. Facts. But once you facts, got it, you I, all this information quickly. Man, when you when you, it, 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 that's why I love that saying, you know, I'm in my bag. When you're in your bag, like nobody like there's nobody who can tell me differently. Like that's why sometimes like I'll snap in, in, in a funny way on some of my, my my subscribers. Like some guy was trying to tell me, you know, today you know, they, they hit you with the back backhand compliment and then they turn around and then try to give you props yeah. as if like they didn't backhand you. Yeah. Like, um, you know, I share my thoughts in a very fluid way and I'm always sharing thoughts that I have given a lot of deep thought to beforehand. And, um, and some people I know on the internet just want to argue, but uh, today some guy was like, um, you know, cause I was, I, was, I was comparing how Spotify is now thinking the way that Apple thinks and that they're always, they're not competing with their cut. They're not competing with their competition. They're competing with their, with their vision. They're making sure that they're, they're bringing that for their vision to fruition and improving upon it. Yeah, right. And they're, 
and improving upon it. And this guy's like, uh, I think you meant to say how Apple th- uh, 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 used to think and not think. And I'm like, and he said, but good video, bro. No, you're not going to, no, that's not what you're not going to do. That's what, that's what you're not going to do with me. Like, my vision is clear. I know who I am. And I think there's a lot of people in this world, man, that they're very lost. And um, they believe that their, their destiny is to correct those who are doing things. Yeah. And um, if, that's, if that's what you feel like is your, is your natural order, your natural state, go monetize it. You can't monetize it in my comments. I would rather that person go and create videos that are reviews of marketing videos. That's real. You would have an, yeah. you would have an audience, right? Yeah, you, would have, you know what I mean? Like be yeah, be the skip yeah. bayless of, of, our, of our industry because, you know, when it comes down to it, you know, brand man Sean and I, and I are in the game. We're in the game actively sweating and, and, yeah. and pa- passing the rock and all of that. Like there's folks who just sit on the sideline and think that they're doing something productive by – uh, 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 you know, trying to negate the points of other people, and it's like you're wasting your time, not mine. Yeah, man. And then there, there's, and that just goes back to the fact that there are so many angles for everything, man. I yeah. Just like how you talked about the Stephen A. Smith, Tim Bayless type. You, you could be a commentator. There was a dude. Like, there's all these blogs, like relationship blogs and stuff on YouTube, obviously. Right. And there's this one guy I came across one day. He looked like he was in high school, but he was building an audience, basically being TMZ. With these blogs, keeping people mm. up on all these different relationships and all the drama going on in the background, where he found right. that pocket, and I and I loved it. I, I really wish I could remember his name. I would shout him out or whatever. I just thought it was interesting, I, and I want to go find, him, go back and just find, um, find him and right. talk to him myself. But he found his bag. You talk about that being in your bag. It's so powerful because it keeps you from being distracted from all these extra opportunities, man. And it makes you say no to a lot of things that 98% of people would say yes to, right? Like just this last week, I got presented with about two or three opportunities that could potentially be life-changing for 2015 Curtis, Mm. right? 2015 Curtis would have been all about these opportunities. I'd have been like, man, like, let's get it. Like, I... I need to keep this ball rolling. I need to get more, you know, uh, uh, streams of income. I need to get my my foot in the door. And 2018, Curtis, doesn't even think twice about it. Because, you know, there's been people who, you know, who, who have who have told me that, you know, what are you going to do? Do YouTube for the rest of your career? And it's like, no, I got other visions of what I want to do. And people who are like, no, you should come over here and be an employee here. And I'm like, why would I do that when it's, I finally have something that's working for me and it's finally, you know, uh, uh, consistently and comfortably playing the bills and not just YouTube, all these different things that I got, these moving pieces. Mm-hmm. Um, I just think that sometimes it, it is human nature for certain people uh, to, to test how, how confident you are in what you're doing, mm-hmm. right? Because if I see somebody that got something going, like Bremen Sean, I know you got, you, got, you got stuff that you delegate and you got a business that you're running. What would I look like coming to you and being like, yo, bro, like you want to um, do this amount of videos on my, on my channel? You know what I'm saying? Like, like it'll help you build. Like, I don't, I'm, not, I'm never going to give you that spiel. Like, yo, if you're trying to build up, like you're trying to, you know, share my audience, I would never do that with you. If anything, I'd be like, let's do an interview and you, you speak your piece and we go from there. But um, I've had a lot of like, you know, former friends that, that approach me with opportunities they think are going to be life changing for 2018 Curtis. And it's like, Nah, like this is a family business now. Like my wife is working with me and, um, you know, we, we, we got the little one. So it's like, if I take time away from what I'm doing to go build somebody else's empire, it, it better damn well better bring back something home, right? Because that's time that I could have been spending building this one right here. Yeah. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm very like these interview situations are very rare these days because I'm only doing it with people that I, I, I truly care about and I, that, that I truly believe in. Like, this is about you. It's not like no, no disrespect to your audience, but this is all about you. You know what I mean? This is I'm about having that conversation with you. I think that that's more important. Appreciate that, bro. Appreciate that. Hey, man, I, I definitely have had those moments where I'm like, man, I can't believe I'm turning some of these things down. And yeah, <laughs> that, but that part of the focus is sometimes you're not necessarily in a position where it's like, dang, I don't need whatever's being offered. However, right. considering what, like the long term of what yeah. sacrifice, especially let's say within music, like some things might 
become a conflict of interest of what you're doing on videos, right? Or right. there's just so many scenarios, but when you just stay in your bag and not do, do what everybody thinks would be a mm-hmm. big win for you, mm-hmm. you, you're straight. Like it just makes that, it so much easier. That part, is, that part is supremely dangerous, doing what everybody else says is good for you because most yep. people are not doing what's good for them. So for them to have this, this enhanced lens that all of a sudden can dictate what's your ultimate destiny and what's best for you and what best aligns with your purpose. Only, you know, your purpose, right? Only, you know, you know, the, the, there's um, a speaker named fair gray that broke down this threefold system for you to find out what is your God given gift and what you're supposed to be doing in life. He said it falls into three different uh, questions that you have to ask yourself. The first one being what comes easy to me, but more difficult for others to do right for me speaking off the cuff comes super easy so i can knock youtube videos out like crazy right for me making eclectic beats that are all over the place that comes easy to me for me writing about raps that are are not typically the the norm that comes easy because i just like talking about these things okay the second thing is what would you do and do it for free right because if you're doing it just for the money that's going to dilute the um the, the amount of work or the, the quality of work that you put into what you're doing, right? That's the second one. The third one is how can you do what you're doing and give back? Yeah. If you can answer those three questions and if what you're doing answers those three questions, and I mean legitimately answers those three questions, don't sleep on that last one. What can I do and give back? Um, because that ultimately is why Brandman Sean has such a successful channel. This is why I have a successful channel, why I have a successful business model. My business model is, is built about giving, you know, give, gives. It's that Gary V jab, 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 jab. And then every once in a while we throw a right hook product that's like, look, I've given you, and even the, the right hook is still a giver, right? The product is still giving you some kind of enhanced quality of, of, of your skill set or of life. Um, but a lot of folks are into a place where they just want to take, 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 and, and, and ignore, ignore, ignore their vision. And they will never, never get to where they ultimately are supposed to be. Yeah, unfortunately. Man. I, I know a lot of people, especially upcoming artists, man, um, or just in, in anybody in the indie world, you fight, fight, fight to win. Yeah. Be clear on that vision because I always talk about, Hey, do you want to be a superstar or do you want to just be a tour and artist or do you really just want to be an artist part time and just make some money that way? And would you be happy with that? Because man, once you get to a position that you are winning, right, that's when shit really hits the fan. At first, it's a responsibility. Like, yeah. Yeah. And then you start to think about stuff. It, it's a weird space, right? Especially when you use when you're used to being an underdog. Uh, when you're mm-hmm. used to maybe not having money, all these things and you start to get into a space where you're winning. And if you start to find a little bit of unhappiness, which a lot of people do there, right? because after they step back a lot of times, you find out that you're winning at somebody else's game as opposed to yours because you had this vision right. of success that had, wasn't in line of the things that you wanted. I, I personally right. went through a period like that um, before when it was like, oh, man, like I'm, I got this momentum. Everybody's like, rah, rah, rah. But I'm like, ah, I'm not feeling this. But it's it was, not where you want to be, is. yeah. Then you're thinking, like, why would I be thinking this when I'm obviously winning, but I'm not winning, right? I'm playing the wrong game. So, right. yeah, no, no, you, 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 that's to me, that's, that's, that's the gospel, bro. Like, you, you, you have to be able to, you got to make sure. And sometimes it does take a trial run where you actually find success and you figure out that that's not the best thing that could have happened to you in the space that you're at. Sometimes you need that. And people are like, people think the ultimate destination is success. And it's like, no, like, like people, people put so much, so much pressure on success and so much pressure on who they have to become to become successful that they don't realize that success is not biased. Success comes to the most evilest people. Success comes to the most genuine people. Success comes to liars, yeah. right? The success comes to like success is not bias, you know. But but the quality of life that you experience, the one that you feel within inside, that's going to be based upon some other metrics. Success, don't be so so so, so focused on that. Like success can come to you, you can have it, and you don't like the taste of it. Happened to me as a as a, as a recording artist to where I, I found success in kind of like toning down 
all of the nostalgia in my music, toning down my voice, being more of a accessible voice and not so animated. And I released an album and Hip Hop DX called it top 25 albums of the year, uh, in their opinion, well, top 25. And I'm like, I should be really happy right now. Yeah. And I wasn't. Right. I was making money. I was generating income from my beat sales and my my business was growing into different courses. And I just wasn't happy because I was not being fulfilled. Something that Tony Robbins always talks about is the six needs of human beings. Only two of those needs are actually what makes you happy and fulfilled. And um, the six needs are this. We have a need for certainty, a need for uncertainty a need for significance, a need for love and affection. And those are the ones that are low hanging fruit. Like we need those to a certain degree, but most people try to find at least three of those and they'll become addicted. Mm -hmm. When in all actuality, the two needs that make you happy and fulfilled are growth and contribution. Mm -hmm. Contributing to something that's bigger than you and also growing at something. If you're growing at something, you feel alive. Yeah. Anything that's not growing is dying. Here's the problem. If you do drugs, you have certainty, you have you have a, 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 a significance, you know, to a certain degree from your drug dealer because he responds back to your, your phone calls. Right. Okay. And third, you have what you think is a love and affection from people who are always going around the city looking for you because they know that you're somewhere, you know, uh, drugged out. Those three can make it an addiction. However, the missing pieces are growth and contribution. Yeah. So if you're giving to say, for instance, you are heading up a um a, an organization that takes care of kids and teaches them how to market themselves you feel significant being mr mr taylor you know what i mean you feel you feel significant in that space and then on top of that you feel love and affection but you feel growth and you feel contribution you only need three of them to make it an addiction right so say that man because i don't know if you know huh? you, you, it's funny you say that i don't know if you know but i used to be a i don't know <laughs> i'm just throwing it out there <laughs> job ever man yeah and, and and it's not the one. It's not the most glamorous. It's not you don't get you know subscribers and all of that. But you do get the the actual feeling of connecting with human beings, of growing, and also contributing to something that you teach somebody. You teach somebody how to tie their shoe. They will never forget who you are. Never. They'll remember you first and last name until they're deep into their forties. They may may forget your last name, but they will remember you forever. And that's the lesson that you and I teach. We teach the 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 essentials of how to market yourself. We teach the yeah. essentials of what will give you a more uh, uh, a clear picture of how to operate your business. So, and these are things that nobody else is fulfilling. And because of that, these lessons stick with people. So uh, I, I, I say that to say there's a lot of people right now who feel like they're living in purpose, but in all actuality, you're fulfilling those low hanging fruit needs. Yeah. And um, that'll sustain you for only so much time. But until you get that growth, until you get that contribution of something that's bigger than just you, you're going to be running that, that, uh, that rat race and not necessarily be happy and fulfilled. Sure, man. I, hey, I got to ask, how do you, what happened to your arm, man, or your hands? Man. You hit that beat pad too hard? No, nah, no, nah, I wish. I wish that's what it was, but I wasn't even making beats at the time. I just, you know, making unwise decisions in the gym. I'll just say it like that, making unwise decisions in the gym. You know, I was trying to get bulky. I was trying to get stocky. You know what I mean? I was trying to get in here, but uh, yeah, I make some unwise decisions in the gym, and <laughs> it's been it's been like about two months and some change yeah. that has been uh, damaging. So I, I'm I'm like very careful how I use it, especially when I got the little one. I got to make sure that I, you know, I pick them up the right way. But yeah, that's what happened with that. <laughs> Dang man, hey, 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 be be cool out here, man. Don't go too. <laughs> Try, try up here trying to be uh try, trying to be stalky i was like man I'm about, I'm about to get in here and gain some weight but then it's good because it, it inspired my whole uh uh fight the dad by campaign over the last 50 I've been 55 that, days man. I've been yeah man I was like, oh he gonna coin whatever he doing he gonna figure out how to how to flip i it. can't can't turn it off you know this you know we can't turn off the branding minds like this is part of who this is part of our dna everything can potentially be something and yeah. i knew that if i kept hashtagging it that's eventually if it if it's not a movement that's fine if it's not if it at least gets a brand that says hey we want to make a t-shirt and we want to cover the cost for it that's extra income that I wasn't even even banking on because I'm just literally sharing my journey. And I think that there's there's a lot of rappers and producers who can learn from 
those very subtle things that we think don't mean anything because maybe they don't have the highest engagement. Mm -hmm. There, there's two different ways to look at engagement. You can look at the numbers of how many people are engaging, or you can look at the quality of the engagement, right? You can have a bunch of people who hit that like button, but five people who leave, you know, semi passionate comments, yep. or you can get that video that, you know, only has 50 likes, but the ratio of comments is like 25, 30. That's, that's probably more quality engagement. That's when you're actually getting people to uh, uh, get, get something out of what you're doing. So uh, I'm, I'm paying attention to that as well, you know, cause I've been, I used to be one that used to focus on really just the numbers of that. But um, I did it, man, 55 days in a row of just high intensity cardio since my hand was jacked up. And um, I dropped off from about 240, 242 pounds to about 227. And Damn. you already know how it goes, man. When you do something like this, you get people who hit you up in the uh, DMs like, it'll go faster if you do this, if you start eating some fruit, if you start doing. And I'm like, what if, oh, just, 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 just imagine this, what if I enjoy the process? <laughs> what if I like, what if I actually like the process? What yeah. if I've read? read books like the, uh, the compound effect and, and the slight edge. And I realized that that growth that I realized that change that is forever life changing changes don't happen just overnight. Yep. Small pieces that build up to it, right? It's small increments, right? You, you tell most people right now, I'll give you $5 million out of my pocket right now or I'll give you a penny that doubles in value over the next 30 days. Most people let take that 5 million and not think twice about it. Mm -hmm. Not realizing that if you had the patience to wait for that penny, that penny that doubles in value over time um, becomes $10 million at the 30th day. Yep. Right? So people look at that and like, that math doesn't make any sense. If you're focused on the math of it, you've already lost because the math does make sense. And secondly, you're missing the point of it right? Instant gratification is not where it's at. It's that slow, monotonous, boring grind. I remember when I was like in my 12th, 13th day thinking like, man, I'm, I'm never going to get to 50. How in the hell am I going to get to 50 days before I knew what 25 came, before I knew what 35 came. And now it's an addiction. Now I'm like, I'm, I'm like talking to my wife about my itinerary of the day. And I'm like, yo, I'm going to go to the gym around this time. That, didn't, that wasn't part of my conversation before, but it took that streak for it to be a life-changing decision, you know? So, oh, yeah. yeah, that's what I, like I wanted to expand that. upon that. <laughs> you get off those shortcuts, you take all those shortcuts all the time, you lose the mental edge that comes from actually achieving. Like, right. you can't lie to yourself no matter what. Like, you know Facts. how to there, and you feel so much different from actually going through the process and knowing where you can do, you can do it again. That's what gives people confidence, like, let's say Arnold Schwarzenegger going from weightlifting to government to movies, all, all those things, because he knew he built the discipline to achieve and climb one mountain. He knows he can climb another mm -hmm. one, right? It, it, you, yeah. You know what's interesting about Arnold, though? Arnold, he brings up another, another, um, another thing that's very important, too. Certain people are not in, not in the headspace. Like we're talking about right now, certain people are looking for the low hanging fruit. They're looking for, you know, the, um, the tangible things, right? Arnold said in one of his bodybuilding books that when he first started lifting weights, they were like, what was your motivation? Were you trying to compete with these people in the world? And he was like, no, nah, I just, I just wanted American women to, to fall in love with me. And that was his, that was his like, his like low hanging fruit motivation. Yeah. And it's important. Sometimes you do need money as a motivation, but yeah. that cannot be your sole motivation. Yeah. Right. Sometimes you need that little, that little, that little shallow kick in the ass for you to be like, you know what? You know, I do want the American women to love me and, and look what it did for him. Yeah. Right now at some point after that, it had to become more than just that shallow reasoning, but he became one of the greatest bodybuilders of all time. And um, it started with a very shallow reasoning, you know? So don't be, don't be, don't feel like you have to change. That's something else I'm changing. I'm shifting gears on my channel. I'm done trying to change negative people or trying to make people feel like they have to become something before success comes to them. Like we said earlier, success is not biased. So if that is the case, you don't have to become anything. 
You have to be who you already are and utilize that in a positive manner. I'm pretty sure back in the 80s, there was a guy with a little bit of, a, of an afro walking around who loved sports to death. And all he did was argue with all of his friends. All he did was debate all the time. I'm pretty sure that man came off arrogant. I'm pretty sure that man came off as argumentative. I'm pretty sure people were like, you need to change that about yourself. But I'm pretty sure that man became Stephen A. Smith. You know what I mean? Yeah. Somebody got to be that person. Somebody has to be that. So I think it's a lot of people out here who feel like I got to change who I am. I got to be less negative because, because, you know, Curtis says that, you know, positive mindset and yada, yada, yada. And it's like, forget what Curtis says on that. Focus on what you have right now. Like an orange can only be an orange. A banana can only be a banana. Yeah. But the problem is when an orange tries to become a banana, it is not walking in purpose. It is not walking with what your contribution to this world is. And here's the thing about it on, on top of that. Who you are today is going to shift over time, especially when you start to find success in what it is you're doing. Yeah. Right? Stephen A. Smith, when he first came out, was spitting all over the place. And he was, you know, boisterous. And, and, and that is preposterous. And he was saying all this crazy stuff. Now he still gives you that juice every once in a while, but it's a toned down version of it because he has changed. Yeah. I'm pretty sure the same fire that existed there, it, that fire is for something else. Maybe it's for his podcasting, but mm-hmm. you will change over time. You don't have to, you don't have to feel like you have to be, you're spending too much valuable time trying to change who you are when who you are is literally going to be the building blocks towards who you ultimately want to be. Yeah, man. There's so much meat in that right there, Baron, because like Charlemagne, a guy, he always talks about not becoming a caricature of yourself. So mm. that's what I think about when you talk about Stephen A. Smith, like not just continuously. He, he might amp up some, but still not necessarily allow himself to stay that one path. And he right. talks about sometimes I can be a little bit more dynamic so I can be in different um, environments. And that self-awareness, like that's what I always find. That's like the number one thing. Gary Vee talks about it. I feel, mm-hmm. That's the number, that's Gary Vee's 100% best message. And a lot of people miss it because they want the success, the money, the, the marketing. Right, like, right. Always dropping self-awareness. Like one of the biggest yeah. things where he says, hey, everybody's not a number one. But you could be number 12 on Facebook and make millions. They made more than all everybody else. Most of the millionaires made today actually are working for other people. It, it's, yep. it's interesting like it's an it's interesting paradigm. It depends on what you want, but it's more so also that self-awareness because if you aren't a number one or whatever, like they're just making that, that um, was easy to think about, but you are number one and you're being a number one is not necessarily about the fact that you don't have the ability to be. It's more so right. about the fact that where, where does your happiness lie? Being a number one comes with a certain type of mindset. And some people, yeah, it's yeah. like extrovert and introvert. I, yeah. I, by nature, man, I'm more of an introvert. I can't yeah. really feel, and, and people don't realize it's not about being talkative and, and, and quiet. It's more about right. where you get your energy from, like mm-hmm. get it by yourself, or do, you, do other people give you energy? I can't for the life right. figure out how people being around other people gives them energy because of being around a lot of people for a long, long, long period of time drains me. Yeah, so how is that yeah it's draining. But that's it a, is. That's a different type of person. There are those people out there. You, you can see Gary Vee gets amped up, you know? Sure, He's, sure. So where is your pocket? Where can you find that happiness? And Because and, and that's what's going to continuously give you that gas. Yeah, well, and, and I think that's why it's always, ha- it's always good to try to find that space where you're at, right? It's, it doesn't, it, it, there's, I mean, for some people, like they like to go to a, to a certain park or they like to go to a certain peaceful place and, that's, I mean, I think that that's necessary, but that, that may be a variable. What happens if you get flown to another state and you have to now find your peaceful place? So I think that you got to find that place where you're at. It, it, it's something that you can do, whether it's meditation, whether it's, you know, just having times where you don't say, say anything, the TV's off, your phone's off, and you just sit in silence. Right. And you just you just need to to find your silence and find that peace right then and there. You got to find where that's at no matter where you go. Right. I used to have it to where, you know, in past relationships where I would get angry and and and, and all I would see is red. And the only thing that I could think to do was to go to my car and put on like one of those like 
those like uh, 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 anger hypnosis or anger like relaxation YouTube videos. And yeah. it worked. It worked because it got, it got me focused on something else. It got me just sort of just relaxing out and, and chilling out and not thinking about the other side of things. But, um, but yeah, man, like, like, like I think a lot of people, man, are, are operating around here and they need to see sometimes how beat up number one is. They need to go see how drained number one is. They need to see how unhappy number one is. They need to see how, how, how unfulfilled number one is before they realize it. And I just, I'll tell you, throughout my career as an artist, as a recording artist and a producer, I met a lot of number ones. I met a lot of people that I used to grow up listening to and w w was, I, I was like, man, like this, I, can't, I can't believe I'm meeting this person. They are beat up. They're beat up because it's a lot of responsibility being who they are because they can't turn it off no matter where they go. Okay. So then I asked myself, is that what I want? And do I want it to be built upon the basis of what other people think is successful for me? Or do I want it to be something where I determine my own, my own, uh, uh, my own destiny? I determine my own time. That's big for me. Like ownership is one big thing for me. Um, time is very important to me as it is for everybody. But um, I don't like giving my time to entities, companies, people that I feel are not valuing that time. Um, and, and that was an eye opener for me within the last few years because I've had opportunities to be like, you know, brand ambassador for Airbit. And I, I realized that, you know, they have a different urgency than I have for certain things. Yeah. Right. They have urgency, but we don't all align. And then when I saw that, I saw a million dollar company, you know, kind of focus in different places and, and I was focused in different places. It was an eye opener to me where I was like, you know what? Not only do I have to do this by myself, but I want to. And I want to build it no matter how, you know, non-successful it may look in the eyes of somebody from the outside spectating. It doesn't matter to me because I, the ultimate success to me is that happiness and fulfillment uh, as well as the monetary gains and the abundance, but I already feel like I, I'm winning. When you already feel like you're winning, like you you not you you don't have time to down other people. You don't have time to focus on things that are, are about losing. It's not a, it's not even a mindset. It's just the fact that life is just showing me too much evidence of things to be thankful for. It's yeah. showing me too much evidence of abundance to focus on scarcity. That's that's what's up, man. And I so I know you've laid down the path. So in so many of your videos leading up to where you sure. are, but now you're in, you're in a totally different space, right? But he got 100 uh, K subscribers, you know, uh, like just stuff. Like you were, you're a different right. Curtis, for, for, and, and not in a bad way, right? And right, right. So where are you in terms of the music industry and, and your personal relationship? Are do you now that you have a little bit more visibility, are you starting to do more traditional industry type? I don't know meetings. Are you are you doing placements? No. Are you still no. sticking? where you nope. are i i am i am not anti-industry but i am pro independence got it right I, I had to get into that space to where it was like i'm not i'm not the, the i'm not the mad independent guy who found success and now i'm looking back and i'm want to stun on the industry no i'll tell you this though i my channel will never again and this is me personally i'm not saying i know you do a lot of uh, industry a type of content sometimes yeah. but my con my content will never ever again speak about how rappers or producers can get into this uh god for second industry mm. um because I, I i look at i look at it and, and people you know and i understand the argument that it is what it is like this, this industry is what it is like you just got to take it at face value you got to know who you are when you get into it but i feel personally irresponsible ushering young dudes and young women into this industry that i know is about to eat them alive and so I got to a place now where it's like, I went through my, my journey and I understood the beast that it is firsthand. Then I saw the beast that it was to so many other people. It's like now how like we're, we're in the, the, the Me Too era, right? Where a lot of women are finding a lot of, a lot of uh, 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 bravery and a lot of uh, uh, support in sharing these stories of things that have ha happened to them along their journeys in their particular industry. I'm in a place now where I'm like, okay, 
I look at them and I see how supportive they are of, of like the stories of like these monstrous dudes that have done crazy things to them. All this support comes to them and those people like it's, it's, a, it's a witch hunt. Like they're gone. They're out of here. But you think about the industry and how many people have had interactions with certain types of names. Like if I mention certain types of names, people are like, yep, I had a bad experience with that person. They actually, they didn't physically do anything to me, but from a spiritual standpoint and from a business standpoint, they demolished me, you yeah. know, but thankfully I am where I am now, but I don't know. Like I feel irresponsible pushing, pushing, pushing both independence and here's some tips to how to get to the industry. When I feel like the industry is pushing towards where we're at, they're pushing towards the internet. Yeah. So for me to tell a producer, Oh, you need to go get placements. That's how you get placements. Uh, you know, send stuff out to the, to the rapper and just wait. That's irresponsible. Yeah. Hey, hey, Curtis, Curtis, you cut uh -huh. out. All right, I cut now, out. I can hear you again. I'm good. I'll say my bad, my bad, my bad. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to say now the brand that I'm pushing with them is that, you can do it from where you're at right now and you can build something that is powerful right where you're at. Yeah. The moment that you say no, the moment that you say, I don't even desire the industry like that anymore, get one foot, because people got one foot in, one foot out. The moment you say, I'm two feet into my independence, I'm sticking here, I'm right here, things will start happening for you, right? You start to get your, your confidence, your self-confidence back. You'll start to get opportunities because people like to, to, people like to support fans, listeners, like to support someone that they know the money is going directly to them. They'll stream your music if they know the money is going directly to you. But if they know it's all these middlemen, they know you're getting funding, they'll start to back away. So now I'm in a place where like, I'm not, there's no way in hell, like, and this goes for any of my contacts from like, Absol and, and this is no disrespect to him, but you know, they literally couldn't pay me to do placements anymore. I, I'm done running that game. I'm done running that game. There's no, like I get, I get, <laughs> I get labels that hit me up all the time testing me to see. Right. And I think yeah. in the last two years, I probably fell off the tread, the wagon one time. Yeah. It was for an opportunity to work with Boogie, but it's because I was such a fan of Boogie uh, yeah. listening to him because of my, my wife put me on to him. Uh, but I sent stuff off and I was, I felt, it felt nasty. Cause I was like, what am I doing? I, I've come too far to be in this same place again, that I was doing this when I was 23, 24 and I'm 33 now. How I'm not doing you, it. You get, you like, how did I get here again? It felt bad. It, it felt, it felt greasy. It felt like, yeah. it felt like I was willing to do it, you know, for, for, I mean, cause I could argue that it was all about me working with that artist, but in all actuality, it is for, I guess, if, for lack of a better term, clout, mm. you know, because because people will look at that and say, oh, man, Curtis King, man, he continues to dominate the game. Look how he's dominating YouTube and he has a place from a boogie. And man, it's so crazy. What you're, and that's like, I don't, that's, to me, those are seeds of insecurity, right? Those are seeds of, of that's you know what I'm saying? Now you, you're in a different mind space. Okay. I'll talk to my wife. Sorry about that. Okay, go ahead. You said now I'm in a different mind space. I'm sorry. Yeah. You were saying, yeah. Before you were ignorant to a lot of things, right? And now you're in a different right. place. And then when you find yourself being in the same space again, you're coming from a to totally different perspective. Like more, because now you know that mm -hmm. you're, the, the insecurity, you, you, can, you can't see stuff like that in certain points of life. But when you have knowledge and, you, and once again, you can't run from yourself. You know, can't like, run from yourself, bro. I know why I did that. And it's like, dang. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I'm trying to fill a hole. Why am I trying to fill this hole when I'm already over here doing my thing? That question right there is the question that a lot of my industry friends that I still, I'm still friends with, um, they, they struggle with that one. They yeah. struggle with that one. And I have to sometimes, not even sometimes, very frequently tell my industry friends, like, do we have a friendship or is this an industry arrangement? If we have a friendship, like I believe that we have, we're probably going to end up not doing business, mm. right? No matter what you got on the table, no matter like, yo, Curtis, I got this thing on the table, man. It's, it's a game changer. All I need you to do is no, no, because that all I need to do is going to take time from what I need to do. Hey, man. <laughs> all I need to do. Hey, I learned, man. It's, it's, all, it's usually man. more than all you need to do anyway. All you need to, okay, if all I need to do, why you didn't do it? That's a booby trap, man. <laughs> well, 
all I need to do, huh? Okay, so yeah, man, it's a good look. Good look. Yeah. You know, a good look for me is for me to show up to my business, show up for the audience that I have built, show up for the people who have purchased my courses. A good look is for me to respond back to those emails, not for me to be in a studio session where I don't smoke, I hardly ever drink, and yeah. I'm sitting up in a studio session and smoked out folks and drunk off their ass, and I'm sitting around here like, are we ever going to work? You know what I'm saying? Like, that's not the environment that, that for me is, yeah. is fulfilling. For some people, they're like, yo, I can't believe I'm in the, the studio with this person. Man, and they smoking. Man, I'm, I'm smoking with them. And, like, that's the culture of where they're at in life. For me, that's not. Like, there's no way that I can come home and, and pick my son up. And then I, like, I'm like, even if I didn't smoke, like, my sweater is just reeking of weed. And I pick my son up and I'm holding him. I can't see that vision in this 2018. That makes no sense, absolutely. But when I was you know, 2012, 2013, Curtis. Yeah, for sure. I could see that. Cause that was just me being a part of the culture. Let me tell you what's a big part that some people are afraid to actually utilize. Sometimes you got to get away from people that even that you think mean you well, mm -hmm. if they're distracting you from what you knew, what you know you have to do. Mm -hmm. Right. Sometimes you got to get away from people who can come up with good distractions, positive distractions. Yep. Right. That that will take you off of your path because in in their position they don't mean they don't mean any harm, but they want you around. If they want you around, sometimes that can be a very selfish decision, or, or, or bring about selfish results. And I was in a place where I made myself available to so many people except for myself. And who needs me more than me? Nobody. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Nobody. So uh, I tell you, I got to a place where I became. Less, because I've always been like, like, like well, I shouldn't say always, but I guess into my, my teens and 20s, I became more extroverted. And because of that, because I spent so much time being an introverted, I wanted to like connect with people and I wanted them to like me and I wanted this and that. When all actuality, there should have been a balance and I should have got to a place where I said, you know what? Forget all that. What I'm going to do right now, do you, you want me to take on? Hey. He's cool. He's cool. I mean, I'm going to bring little man on, on, on the camera if you don't mind. Hey, man. Do what you got to do, man. Family man. Absolutely. I'm always down with people taking care of the family. <laughs> he, he, he'll be cool. He'll be cool. He, he'll talk some marketing too. Say hi, Nas. Hey, bye -bye. Get knowledge bye -bye. early in life. <laughs> yeah, oh, no. He going he gonna to definitely get his share of it. But um, I don't want to keep you too much longer anyway, man. You're good, bro. But, yeah. Um, the, um, what's one thing? I want to get the mindset and where you are in life okay. now, right? Because you've already talked about that path so many times before as far as getting to those other places you've been, but now you're in a new air. And what are you doing daily outside of working? Whose content does Curtis King um, consume? If I'm going to be very transparent with you, yeah. Um, the last person that I that I really consumed on a regular basis was probably like that puts out consistent content was probably like a Gary V or probably like you know a, a Ty Lopez, but I stopped. I say probably within the last two or three months, I just stopped. Mm -hmm. and, and 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 what I started what I started to do when it came with this book that I read, um, I forget what the name of the book was. Um, oh, thick skinned. Mm -hmm. Right. Because uh, it was a book called Thick Skin and basically was telling you how to develop thick skin because it was at a time where, you know, I did that video about how, why you shouldn't pirate FL Studio and how they came after me and how, you know, I learned my lesson and people like crucified me on the Internet because they were like, oh, you're a snitch. Oh, you did it. And did it. And just all this stuff they were saying about me, like talking about me, talking about my family, all kind of crazy stuff. And it was like, I needed to develop a thicker skin. So I read that book. And one of the things that it said was that, you know, um, we sometimes do a lot of things out of insecurity, one of which being we imitate our the people we, we, we watch and consume. Mm -hmm. So I had to stop. I had to stop watching and consuming all those influential people to me and start to consume the things that they would consume. Mm. Okay. So everybody's watching Gary Vee. Everybody's watching all these different people. I had to say, what is Gary Vee reading? 
Because if I can read what he reads, or if I can read what my influence, what Tony Robbins reads, if I can read what they're influenced by, I'm going to get to the same information, but at the same time, I'm going to be able to take it into a path that they'll be inspired by. Yeah. Right. And I put it, I put a tweet up. I was like, you know what? I don't think the point of Gary V sharing all this content is for us to like, completely imitate everything that he's doing. I mean, from the text to the bar that goes across the, 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 the bottom where it's like a one minute bar. I don't think he does that saying like, this is exactly what I want. I think he does it to inspire and plant seeds of what we could, what we could do. And right. so I put that up and he was like, this tweet makes me smile. And I was like, see, now I get his attention when I'm being less like him. Yep. So I'm in a place now where it's like, well, how do I continue to trailblaze? Well, I continue to read things that I know for a fact, for a fact, that most of my music peers are, are never going to pick up th these type of books. But I, t I pick them up. And then, I, and then I do things with the books that I know even my, my, my reading friends don't do. From the highlighting to the put them on note cards to going back and retyping all the parts of the books that I have highlighted so that I have those most important points embedded into my memory right and so right now i'm in a place of gathering more knowledge i'm in a place where um i'm batching a lot more of my content i got probably about two months worth of content in the bank right now nice. that um you know my video editor shout out to jay anime is editing currently right now and i'm i'm making sure that i'm not saying yes to anything that don't contribute to what's going on right here if they don't contribute to the business, I can't give I can't give him any other business except for my own. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like 100%. so so independence is number one right now, and and not just saying independent because it's the cool thing, but like really doing what it requires. I remember going to the the strange music uh, facilities about a year ago, and I saw the warehouse, I saw the multi levels, I saw the the studio equipment, I saw that they they have it to where they literally don't have to ever leave the premises. All of these acres that they have, they never have to leave to do music videos because they have a completely dedicated room that is a rehearsal hall and a place they shoot videos. They build sets within this room, wow. right? They, they build stages within this room, right? They have nothing but like a, a, a warehouse of merchandise. Every single piece of merchandise that they have is within a, another, another part of the acres. They have their own car wash because they got tired of having to go to different car washes, um, you know, when they could literally be recycling that money within their own business. So they got their own automated car washes, okay? They generated so much income and they personally got tired of having to go the long way to go get food from, from their, their strange land that they put in a bid and put in money to buy a bridge. Brand Man Sean, they built a bridge in Kansas City what? So that not only so that they can go uh, faster towards where the food is at, now people have a passageway that makes it easier for them to go to food. To me, that's power. That's to me. That's 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 what I look at and get inspired by. That lights a fire under my under myself. Not being on a billboard charts. That don't do it for me no more. It used to. Not no more. Now I look at that and I say, Yo, that needs to be done on the, the West Coast, right? Not how, not imitating them, but saying, what can I do that requires a warehouse? Yeah. What can I do? Because that, man, even seeing like, hey, bro, here's the last part of it. I know I'm talking a whole lot, but here's the last part of it. Yeah. Beyond all that stuff that they have, they also have their own construction company because they got tired of outsourcing that. So they have their own. So, so you go through all these different, you know, I went on a tour. You go through another room. They have nothing but construction vehicles. Mm -hmm next to their like touring uh, 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 vehicles. So they don't have to ever outsource for touring vehicles. All that money is within there. They never have to outsource for construction because they got their own construction company. That's a tax write off. I'm okay. seeing all this happen in the same building and I'm like, that's the kind of independence I want to go for. It may not look exactly the same, but that for me, I said, the stuff that we fight over in hip hop is such crumb, 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 crumbs. Tell in comparison that. to what we can ultimately be doing. And so now I'm looking at it and I'm like, okay, it's 
time to step it up. It's time to go even further with it. So that's that's mindset that I'm thinking right now is yeah. is um much bigger than where I've been thinking before. And I think that's why that's why God sometimes doesn't give you what you think you want right then and there, what you think you need, because you're not dreaming big enough. You're right. You're right. That's that's where I'm at. <laughs> like that, man. I, I mean, I knew, but when you get into building bridges, like this is a whole nother level, man. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't. That's know beyond that. music. Yeah. That's yeah. cultural. That's beyond. Yeah. That's to the point where it's like they they got they got tired of buying their own beer, so now they made their own brewery. <laughs> See, yeah, that that's that stuff that I love, man. <laughs> <laughs> Personally, like when you talk about that power and stuff, like I always think education. Like, it helps with what I do now. I told you, sure. I, used to, I used to teach uh, for like a year at a nonprofit. I, uh, I just did it right out of college. Um, right. Like one of the, just that experience there, like everything I do, I know I want to be able to come back and then continue to build like just more things within education for people. Mm -hmm. like, because I've seen the impact that it can make in a short period of time. Like it's wild. Bro. I don't go into like that particular program that I was doing, but you were basically changing yeah. people's lives dramatically in a year but all because we gave them right education versus that slow underserved education that a lot of people experience. Absolutely. But yeah, man, man so I, I, I see that value. I love that. And, and one, and one more thing that you said, we talk about, I mean, you, you said a lot, I might even go even super deep. Into no, you're that. good. You're good. <laughs> but even the competition in, in hip hop fighting for crumbs, right? You're, you're, yeah. You're crabs in a barrel, but you're like, you're ready to kill people over, some money that won't even last you the, over the next week. You know what I'm saying? Like that yeah. mindset has just been, it, it, it repels me. And I, I don't yeah. understand it, but when I've seen certain things like what you're talking about, where you see the impact can be so much greater and it's not right. a sum game. Me winning or you winning does not mean I lose. Like I, yeah, I, feel, I feel like successful people with that right mindset, they might get in, like, through failure, they might say, I see a failure, I don't want to be that. But when other people succeed, they don't say, they don't envy other people's success. That just makes them want to have their own version of success. Yep, yep, yep. So many, people view, so many people view failure as a yes or no process. When in all actuality, it's, it's, it's about, it's a results. It's no, it's no failure. It's only results. Exactly, man. Because I've done things and people have blocked, uh, like, start to see me as competition. I've never even seen, uh, like, just things I've done. <laughs> uh, I see them as competition, especially when some people have way bigger backing and funding. I'm like, man, I'm right. all on bootstrap. And then, you know, it's just, hey, you know how the politics get and things like Bruh, that. They don't, they can't match. You know what? They like, can't match. They can't match. They can't match your authenticity and that burns yeah. them. Yeah. That no matter how much money they have behind them, and I've encountered, you know, I've, you know, I've encountered this as well. Yeah. No matter how much money this person has behind them, no matter how much success they have, they don't feel like it's brand man Sean type of success. They don't feel like it's Curtis King type of success. And that bothers them because mm. we can't explain it because we're not in that position. And I think that's another reason why I stopped consuming like how with what everybody's consuming and reading what everybody's reading because it's like, if we're all cycling through the same thing, where does the progression happen? Where do the outliers occur? Where does the tipping point occur? Where does where do I say to myself, okay, this is where I need to separate from the from the from the herd? Mm -hmm. So I've been aggressively separating from the herd in a physical sense, meaning that on a weekly basis, I probably only see my wife and my son on a weekly basis physically, mm -hmm. right? Outside of like the mailman, the the the, the you know the lady who owns the complex that you know we're renting at for the most part i'm focused on a few different things one getting my credit score somewhere crazy that has never been and it's funny how that happens when you get by yourself and your credit score starts getting increased um but i getting away from that not going to shows anymore i'm not worried about networking i'm worried about making sure i build up relationships with the right people because i'm not trying to network up i'm trying to network at, at, at face value I'm not trying to network my way up. Some people are in that place. Yeah. I'm not trying to go shake hands with nobody. I'm not trying to go meet this person of influence. I don't care. Yeah. I'm all about right now building what I have right here because I believe it's, it is something and I believe it can be something even greater if, if I have the audacity, I guess, to give it the time that it deserves. That's what's up, man. Hey, last thing I got to ask you. I, I see the, the hoodie. 
You know what I mean? I I, I know that you're a Lakers fan. I, yeah. I, <laughs> I'm a Lakers fan as well. Uh, squad okay. lost last night. Um, <laughs> but I, I, I got to know your thoughts on where the Lakers are right now, man. What, what How do you see the squad? I mean, this is the most excitement we've had. I mean, last year was probably the most excitement we've had since the 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 good Kobe era because the last few years of Kobe was not the most exciting era but I'll tell you this what I love the most is seeing and people don't ever talk about this what I love the most is seeing how the young guys are shifting the way that they're talking now Mm. right because the young guys can get out there and shoot baskets that's cool but all that stuff is going to to fail during the playoffs because when those shots don't start falling all of that false confidence that you that you didn't build up, the actual confidence you didn't build up, is not going to uh, suffice. So I'm looking at Kyle Kuzma. This dude sounds like he's been studying LeBron interviews and studying Kobe's interviews. Yeah. And sure yeah. enough, this is the first. This is who, and you look at him now. Like last year, he was like more talkative. Now he's like mannerisms are changing. Yeah. I'm paying attention to that because I'm like, if they can get it in that sense, if they can start emulate, even like Lonzo, seeing him play with more heart now, um, it's inspiring, man. Like, I, I like seeing the young guns adapt and uh, be, ex- be experienced on a nightly basis to, to the greatest player in the game right now. Like, that's got to do something to your game. So I just hope that we can keep the majority of our young core, even though I feel like either Ingram or Kuzma maybe getting yeah. pushed out. I hope not, you know, when we try to get this free agent next year. But yeah. I like what we have. I feel like if, if LeBron was seven years younger, we would, we would not be looking for a free agent. I feel like we would have keep this core and build it up. But because yeah. of where he's at, we got to, you know, we got to do what we got to do with Father Time. You're right about that, man. I really, I really rock with the core of, the, of this team. That young core yeah. last year, the fact that they were able to make the progress that they made over the summer, Shows a lot. Like you can see all their skill sets rising, but it, their interviews. You're right. They they speak a little bit like vets. Like they everybody is truly on a mindset. It seems of as long as we get the W. Like, man, they they, they playing like they got something to prove. Man, that's yeah. what I like. I love. Oh, I don't right. care what sports team you love. I don't care who you. Doesn't matter. You want to see your team playing like like they have to. Like they're trying to prove something. Like I, I yeah. it's got to be frustrating to be a Golden State fan because they'll play like below average for three or four quarters, get themselves in a 17, 17 point, uh, uh, you know, hole just to get excited about competition yeah. because the competition is so far below what they, what, what they, they they're able to do. Yeah. I saw it a, a few nights ago when they faced the Knicks because um, I'm part of a fantasy league squad right now. And so I, I pitched to all these games. I got the league pass. I'm watching this game and I'm like, bro, this is not how the Warriors play. They're like literally playing below their competition so that they have something to get excited about. 14, they're like down 17 points in the fourth quarter. And all of a sudden, Durant scores 25 in the fourth. Like, yeah, come on, fam. We're going for 41 that game. Yeah. <laughs> they, they, they like, all right, we'll let y'all. We'll give y'all a little bit. Uh, a little bit. <laughs> it's sad, man. They're, 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 where, where they are skill set wise, man. Like, man. But what, what do you think about Rondo and Lonzo? You know what? I, I like the fact that, that Rondo is there. I'm kind of sometimes a little bit weary about what his motives are because I feel like yeah. I feel like he's a Celtic to, to, the, to the core, right? He's a Celtic. He bleeds green and all that. So I kind of worry sometimes if, like, he's looking at this year as I'm about to get back at every beef that I've had throughout the year because I feel like when he swung on, on CP3, I was like, he been wanting to do that for a long time. A long time. I think that that veteran leadership, once again, seeing somebody like Rondo play so fast, but yet under control, mm-hmm. is going to show Lonzo, oh, I can even do this into my later years if I do the things that he's doing, right? Mm-hmm. So I like, I like to see that veteran balance, even though I think Lonzo's still out here playing scared a lot of the times. Um, he's a lot right. better this year. Uh, yeah, but... But then, too, I, I, I forget, man. He's 20 years old. He just, he, just, he just turned 21. He's just 21. Like, I can't imagine being 21 and having the responsibility of the Lakers on my back. The Lakers? Lakers. Maybe, the, maybe the Milwaukee Bucks. And but the Lakers? Ball as your dad. <laughs> Come on, man. Like, there's enough pressure in the household. Can you imagine now going out there and getting booed and, and, and just ex- being expected to be Jason Kidd in your first year? And it's like, 
you know, I, I understand it. But now I tell you, man, I love seeing the balance, especially Lance Stevenson. I just bought my Lance Stevenson jersey. I got a LeBron one. I got, I got, I got a Lance one. And the next one I'm getting is this black uh, Kuzma jersey. And I'm good. Man, Lance, bro, you need a person like Lance in your team, especially when you're still developing. I really hope we lock him down. Like, he should have got the contract that KCP got. KCP got $12 million this year to, to, uh, to average four points. I, I, Man. I, 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 that was, hey, that was that clutch sports, uh, you know, special right there, man. Was, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I, I, I can talk on a tangent of that. I'm just, I'm so passionate about my Lakers. Almost like the, almost to the point, as much as I'm passionate about music sometimes, yeah. I don't miss a game, man. I don't care what Gary Vee say. I'm not missing my game, and, and, and I'm still getting my work done. This is my getaway. That, 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 that's how I am, man, with the Lakers, man. I, um, only – my last thing I'll say, and I'll say particularly to Alonzo, I think that dude, I'm actually very bullish on him, man, because of the pressure he had because of his dad. Right. He was playing with LeBron. I mean, obviously he has a basic skill set. In this right. Rondo situation, I think the, the amount of adversity from different angles he's going through personally, if, if, he, if he comes out at positive, it's going to either be like up here. Man, he's got to be. You know what He's I mean? got to be. Hot. You, can't, you can't play with – the pressure of your dad, like you said, play with, alongside a championship point guard like Rondo, yeah. and 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 also to play with LeBron James, and not become something. All the pressure is off Alonzo. Of They're not even looking at Alonzo. They're actually rooting for him now yeah. to be a starter, right? All he has to do is literally go in there, play up to speed, get the dimes out there, and and do what he does. Hit his hit his three pointer. His three pointer is a lot better this year, but. We'll see, man. I, I think that he, he'll rise to the occasion. I think that him being 21, I think seeing stuff like LeBron took Kuzma and Lonzo to the Drake concert, I think those things mean something to the chemistry of the team. Right. Like seeing them come together and them feel like, you know what, this guy who's the ultimate superstar respects us enough to invite us to this, you know, this, this event. I think that means something. And I think that this team, bro, like, I'll tell you this. As many as much people are saying, like, we're not playing for a championship this year, and people are – look, if I'm any team in the West, I don't care how deep and experienced I am, I do not want to see the Lakers for a seven-game series. That is going to be a hell fight because they are going to – man, I do not want to see – I do not want to see a team that has six fouls that they can waste on a Mike, Michael Beasley, who's a little bit out there anyways – I don't want to have to guard a JaVale McGee who's a seven-foot flexible, you know, dunker and, 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 uh, and blocker. I don't want to see a Lance Stevenson who's, who thinks it's Rucker Park every single night. Yeah, for real. Thinks, the, thinks the and one game. I don't want to see the speed of the Lakers because you're going to make me run, and I, and I do half court most of the time. I don't want to see LeBron. Like, they got enough of those I don't want to see to the point where it's like and, – and Rondo might sock me in my, in my chin if I act crazy. So, like, let me yeah. – let me. Yeah, you don't want no – I think that's the best the Lakers going to ask for this year is to literally have teams like, damn it, the Lakers are coming to town. Yep. Man, I, don't, I do not want to deal with that up and down. So I think to, that's, that's a success this year. Making the playoffs and just being a problem will be a, a success. But, yeah, that's it, though. <laughs> I appreciate that. I had to get that out, man. Um, hey, I appreciate you as always, man. You're, you're an inspiration. I love to see – People doing what you're doing and stay with the positive energy, man. Thank um, you, bro. You're blazing that path outside the industry, but we all know we all stay patient. Anybody stays patient, it's eventually coming this way. So yeah. you might as well stay there because the first movers are they're gonna be in a nice little position. Um, all you artists, all you producers, all you whatever you do, you know. So uh, keep that up. But have you got anything you want to leave everybody with? Um. Uh, just the, the, the YouTube, obviously, is Curtis King TV, Curtis King with two S's. My website is CurtisKingBeats.com. Uh, producers that want to learn how to build their own website, I have a website building course. You can put your beat store in there. And you can start selling your beats today. Uh, for producers that want to learn how to use FL Studio, I have a, a course called F The Fluid Music Producer. For rappers that want to learn how to build their own website, uh, I have a course in there as well. So... There's a lot of resources there waiting on you. Just come visit us, um, you know, and, and if you have any questions, absolutely hit me up on the social medias. It's at Curtis King with two S's on every single social media. But I'm here just the same way as Brandman Sean, man. I appreciate those kind words, bro. Like, I, I, you know, I always 
am, am very supportive of you. I brought your name up yesterday. I had an interview with the letter L Beats. And, um, and, 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 I, and I brought you up because I was like, he's, this is another, another individual out there in, in Atlanta doing some amazing things for this culture that's building. Uh, I'll just say this last tidbit. Rappers and producers that are out there that are independent, just like Brandman Sean said, be patient. The tide is coming this way if it's not already this way. Um, start making your New Year's resolutions today. Don't wait till the, the clock hits zero. Your, your New Year's res, your, your plans for March, February, March, April should be made right now and, and realize that this year they attacked the online music producer. Next year, they're going to have to stand out of the way of the music producer. They're going to try to become it. Yeah. And I think that after that, they're eventually going to have to become in harmony with the online music producer and the online rapper. Right. And, 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 and producers stop disrespecting these online rappers because they're part of the same community as you, yeah. regardless of how you feel about their music. Um, they're in the same community and they are helping you have a business. So that's it, man. Thank you, Brandman Sean, for having me on, bro. And let me rant for a couple. <laughs> it's, all, it's always good, man. They be, they gotta, they're going to have to start calling you Uncle Curtis eventually. Man, that's what it is. Hey. They already do. <laughs> Hey, everybody, everybody, you guys know what to do, man. If you like this video, go ahead hit that like button. If you like it, might as well share it. And if you ain't subscribed, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button.